Hello, my friends. So what I want to talk about today, and you saw some of this on the color worksheet that you guys had from Friday, that sometimes to get from one denominator to another number, another number in the denominator, it is not a direct, like you can't multiply by a whole number and get that new number. So what I'm going to teach you about today is called scaling up and scaling back. Sometimes what we have to do to our ratio is to simplify it before we can get to this new answer. And that's what we kind of talked about in class. If you always went down to a unit rate, then you can get to any new denominator that you want. So this is still out of lesson 1-4, and we're calling this scaling ratio tables. And today's date is going to be 10, 29, 18. Okay, so let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So in black is going to be our given information. And you've seen a table like this show up on your homework where there was this, uh, let's see, three columns, but we only used two of them. So let's say that we want to take height in centimeters and we want to put it in a ratio with height in inches. So we're going to do one, two, three. So we know from our given information that 25 centimeters is the same as 10 inches. And what I want to do is get to 105 centimeters and I want to figure out what uh, inches, how many inches would be 105 centimeters. So the question is, I don't know how to get from 25 and multiply it by something to get to 105. There's just, in fact, there isn't anything. I can get to 100 and I can get to 125, so that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is look at my two numbers, 25 and 100. So I'm going to just look here in this column and ask myself, is there something that those two numbers have in common that I could divide out? And I think most of you would say, yeah, we could divide out a 5. So if I go ahead and divide out a 5, 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So now we need to figure out how do we get from 5 to 105. So that's going to be our new plan, is to figure out how to get from here to here. Well, sometimes, since that's not a math fact I've memorized, but I do know 5 goes into that number, I can go ahead and do long division to figure out what I'd multiply 5 by to get to 105. Well, 5 goes into 10 twice evenly with no remainder. Bring down the 5, and 5 goes into itself once with no remainder. So if I multiply 5 by 21, I get to 105, which means if I multiply 2 by 21, the same thing, I'm treating both numbers the same, I'm being fair, then that's going to tell me how many inches is comparable or equal to uh, 105 centimeters. And I get 21 times 2 is 42. So what I'm saying here is that 105 inches, 105, or excuse me, centimeters, is the same as 42 inches. Okay? So I scaled back. That means I scaled down by dividing by 5. And then with the new numbers, 5 and 2, I scaled up, which means I multiplied by the same number to get to my final answer. So let's kind of write that down for just a minute. So my two things I did was, number one, I needed to scale back. Actually, let me do that. I'm going to do that in blue so it matches what we were doing. Silly me. So when I scale back, I'm going to divide, or in other words, reduce, the original ratio. 
And the reason why I'm doing this is to see if I can find a number that goes evenly into a target number. My target number is always at the end column. So this guy here, 105, would be considered the target number. Okay, so that's our goal. Okay, now once I did my target number, or I got to a number that I could have as a target number, I ended up needing to get to from 5 to 105. I had to go up higher. So that's when I scale up. So when I scale up, I'm going to multiply the new ratio. And actually, it's not even a new ratio. It's just these are two things we can do. So I'm just going to say ratio because I want to give you the directions generically um, <clears throat> because sometimes I start with scaling up and scaling up if I didn't get it the first time, or sometimes I scale back and then scale up or scale up and then I can scale back. It goes all sorts of directions. Multiply the ratio by a value that ends with the target number. So I guess maybe I should go back here. So we're going to divide or reduce the original ratio. Uh, and again, our goal is to try to find a number that um, gets to 105. Okay. Okay, let me do another example. Let me go to the next page. Um, let's say that we want to compare American dollars to Canadian dollars. So versus Canadian dollars. So I'm going to do another chart. And we've got American dollars. columns here and we'll start that 50 American dollars is the same as 60 Canadian dollars and we need that 50 to become a 20 and there's nothing I can divide uh, by a whole number 50 by to get to 20 so let me think what I could do so I'm looking at 50 and 60 and I notice that they are um, both divisible by 10. So I'm going to scale back by 10. So I'm going to go get my number smaller. So when I divide by 10, that's the same thing as me saying I'm going to scale back by 10. So let's see, when I do 50 divided by 10 is 5, 60 divided by 10 is 6. Now, I see that I can get from 5 to 20 by scaling up from going higher. So I'm going to multiply by 4. 5 times 4 is 20, so I have to multiply 6 by 4, and I get 24. So when I multiply by 4, I scale up. So I'm going larger by 4, okay? So scale back is a division problem. You're going smaller, and scale up is a multiplication. You're getting larger. So we would conclude that $20 U.S. is the same as $24 Canadian. Canadian. All right, let's just clean that up. That's just ugly. Okay? 
All right, so on the next page, we're going to go ahead and have the examples that you already glued down into your composition notebook to, to do a couple more. So hold on. And today, you can see the blanket that's underneath here. <clears throat> so, all right, we've got um, 10 cans of corner on sale for, sorry, try that again. Cans of corner on sale for $10, at $10 for four. All right, I can't even read today. Let's try this one more time. Cans of corn are on sale at 10 for $4. So 10 cans for $4. Find the cost of 15 cans. So again, we've got a little bit of a dilemma here where I cannot get um, 10 to go into 15. So I'm going to look at 10 and 4. So the only place I can try to look is here within the fraction. And I notice that they're both even. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to scale back by 2 since they're both even. So 10 divided by 2 is 5 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then what I notice is that I can scale um, up. From 5, I can get to 15. And so I'm going to multiply by 4. Let's see if I can get my pen. doesn't want to work here. All right, hold on. Sorry, I had to resize that a little bit. So to go from 5 to 15, I'm going to scale up by multiplying by 3. And I'm going to do fair is fair, multiply by 3 on the bottom. So 5 times 3 is 15, so 2 times 3 is 6. So we would say the cost of 15 cans of corn is $6. Okay? All right. So last one doesn't even give us a chart, so we're going to kind of create our own for it. And it says, Joe mows lawns um, during his summer vacation to earn money. Uh, he took 14 hours last week to mow eight lawns. At this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? So I think I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Hold on a second. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and create a chart out of this. So we have 14 hours last week to mow eight lawns, and at this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? So we have lawns, number of lawns, versus number of hours. So let's put the, um, let's see, what answer do we want? We know hours, let's do the hours on top. So number of hours. From here, and then we'll have number of lawns. And let's see, we're going to create three columns here. And the first one has 14 hours with eight lawns. And we want to know how many lawns in 49 hours. All right, so I cannot multiply 14 by anything to get to 49. So I'm going to have to look for another avenue. So I'm going to look down in the column. And I'm going to see what uh, I can do here. And what I notice is they're both even. So I'm going to scale back by dividing by 2, since they are both even. And we get uh, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then I notice that 7 can go evenly into 49. So we're going to scale up by multiplying by 7, top and bottom. So 7 times 7 is 49. 4 times 7 is 28. So we can say, and this is going to run into my blankie. Sorry about that. I think I'll do black so it stands out. Joe can mow. Look, Mom, I'm riding on a blanket. Ooh, don't get in trouble. I said mow, and I wrote move. Mow 28 lawns in 49 hours. Okay? So again, all we're talking about today is how can I go from one number to another 
when they don't go evenly into each other. So we think about, is there a way to reduce what I have, the, the two numbers I have in the column, by scaling back. Sometimes I may have to even scale up to begin with, then to scale back. You never know. All right, uh, good luck with this today.